Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here speaking to you, and I'd like to thank the organizers, Dr. Klatz and Dr. Goldman, uh, for inviting me to this special symposium on stem cells. Um, I've, I've been very fortunate in my career because in, 1980, in 1982, uh, I did my first bone marrow stem cell transplant at the University of Glasgow uh, Medical School in Scotland. I was part of the pioneering team where we were one of the first groups, uh, especially in Europe, to be able to use stem cells, adult stem cells, and that's the patient's own stem cells, to be able to treat uh, patients with hematologic malignancies, particularly acute leukemia. I continued to do uh, work on stem cell transplants, particularly for hematologic malignancies, but over the recent years, there's be, been an explosion of research in stem cells, and I'm particularly fortunate to be, again, having had that experience, particularly in the hematologic malignancies, to now be able to uh, utilize that experience for some of the evolving therapies, particularly in the areas of degenerative diseases, and hopefully uh, to reverse some of the effects of aging. In my, my presentation is going to be divided into three parts. In the first part, I'd like to talk about some of the current applications and the procedures that we use for treating patients with different blood cancers. I will review with you some of the outcomes that we are expecting and that we are seeing. And then uh, what I'd like to also do is to talk to you about some of the approaches that we have been taking and personally have been involved in. As you know, and I know that as a group, you're very, you're very much on the same wavelength as I am, and that is your interest is not in waiting till patients actually develop diseases and treating at that point, which unfortunately tends to occur very much in the situation of patients undergoing bone marrow transplant today. Our approach is why don't we be proactive and let's find out since we know a lot of what's, what can happen, why don't we prevent it? And that's one of the reasons why, since uh, 1998, I have been doing the bone marrow transplants on a totally outpatient basis. And I will show you how we can give massive uh, mega dosages of chemotherapy and yet be able to keep the patients and the outpatient. And that will be the basis of my, the first part of my lecture. In the second part of my lecture, I want to discuss some of the aspects of aging on stem cells, and also some, discuss some recent developments where it is possible to use the comp all the components or some of the components of young blood to be able to treat or reverse some of the aspects of aging. And also, in particular, I will show you a protocol we're using, where we use, uh, which is under study where we are using granulocytes from young, healthy individuals to treat and hopefully cure patients with cancer. In the third part of my presentation, I want to talk to you about some of the work uh, and the models that we have, we have been working on to use to be able to mobilize stem cells from within the bone marrow to be able to treat neurodegen neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's and strokes. So I know that this morning you've had, a, you've had stem cell 101s, and I'm just, if you, would, if you would bear with me, because I think it's important for you to understand that I'm talking about adult stem cells. You will hear me use the word embryonic from time to time, but I want you to, to recognize that I'm using the word embryonic to, in reference to the cells that are within our own bone marrows. I do not do any work on embryonic stem cells. First of all, again, let's just remind you of what a stem cell. The stem cell is a basic cell. It's an unspecified cell that has the capability of undergoing self-renewal. That is, it renews itself and produces an exact clone of itself, but also has the capability, when triggered in the right way by the right factors, to be, under, be able to undergo differentiation. So, again, very, let's be very clear, we are talking about two different cells, adult stem cells, and then you will hear, you're familiar when 
uh, about embryonic stem cells. Unfortunately, in the lay press, people tend to confuse stem cells and everything that they hear about, they think it's embryonic stem cells. So if you will forgive me, that's the reason why I'm just emphasizing again that I will be speaking about adult stem cells. The traditional way that I have been used to getting stem cells have been harvesting from the bone marrow, the peripheral blood, and cord blood. Now, embryo let's go back to embryonic stem cells so just we can get this out of the way. What is it? It's a cell which is obtained from the inner cell mass of a blastocyst, uh, and it can form any of the 200 different types of tissues in the body. However, it's a foreign tissue. And if it's transplanted into an individual, then we run the risks of all the complications of an, allergen, of an allergenic or a donor, for, uh, uh, um, an unrelated donor. This is what, a blast, this is what a, an embryonic stem cell looks like uh, it's within, when it is grown in culture. And also to... I'm sorry, I, the, the pointer doesn't seem to be working. But anyway, if you, read, if you follow with me on the left-hand part of the slide, you will see a fertilized egg and a day five. It's called a blastocyst. The, within the blastocyst, there is an inner, stem, there is an inner uh, cell mass, and the stem cells are taken from the inner cell mass, and they are cultured. And these cells can be cultured up to about 200 times if they are put in the right culture medium. And um, okay, thank you. And if they are put in the right culture medium, um, they can be grown indefinitely. Now, coming back to adult stem cells, these are traditionally the definition is that these cells are obtained uh, from tissues after birth, and the majority will differentiate into a nar narrower range of tissues. They exhibit plasticity, and they can repair the tissues of the body by re replenishing specialized cells. And I just want to throw a little bit of confusion into it and tell you that there are some cells, some adult stem cells, which have embryonic stem cell-like characteristics, but they're not fully embryonic stem cells. And I will come back to that again later. So this slide shows the development of the hemopoietic system. And if you look in any traditional textbook of hematology, that you will see this. However, since 1978, another component which needed to be added to this was not added. And that is the concept of the bone marrow or the stem cell niche, or the stem cell environment. And therein lies a lot of where the science and the research in stem cells is actually up being, um, is taking place now. And if we can understand what goes on within the stem cell niche and what happens to the stem cells and the signals that go back and forth between the stem cells and the, bone, the cells of the bone marrow niche, we will have much better understanding of how to be able to use the stem cells to be able to treat patients much more effectively. Let me just try and explain to you about the bone marrow stem cell niche or the, the niche within the, the, the bone marrow. There are niches, there are stem cell niches in every organ, but we, we know the most about the stem cell niche in the bone marrow. There are two types of niches. There is the osteoblastic niche and there's the vascular niche. The osteoblastic niche is adherent to the bone, to the endo endosteal cells in the bone. These cells, within that environment, there are other cells. There are, of course, there are osteoblastic cells. There are osteoclasts. There are mesenchymal cells, which are the supporting stroma. And there are also neuronal cells. There, there, it's interesting that there are neuronal cells within the osteoblastic niche. And Dr. Gann was talking about the effect of the mind on the stem cells. And that perhaps is the connection because of those neuronal cells. Anyway, the purpose of the osteoblastic niche is actually to, to store stem cells and to ensure that there is self-renewal.